Let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. Today's topic through the senses, go beyond the senses. You can achieve freedom only when you are able to go beyond the senses. As long as you are caged in the body, mind and the senses, you will not be able to experience real freedom. So, if you are aspiring for real freedom, you will have to take steps to get out of this cage of senses, mind. You must get out of this uh, very strong cage as it were and you have been born as a human being in order to work out the details of going beyond the senses and the mind. In order to do that you will have to come to spiritual life. So. When you come to spiritual life, you have to be very different of what you are doing and what you are going to achieve. Well, it is not difficult when you apply yourself wholeheartedly, when you follow the spiritual path, it should be possible for you to go beyond the senses. Then only you will get into real freedom. That means you will get into real peace and real bliss, which are the characteristics of experience of truth. Once a person approached a great sculptor and she asked him a question. Sir, is it very difficult to sculpt this particular woman had great appreciation for the artwork of the great sculptor. So she was curious to know how to get into that perfection of producing uh, beautiful art. And the great sculptor replied in a very straightforward way, smilingly, but that statement has a great significance. He said, well, 
It is not difficult. Just you buy a block of marble and chisel away what is unwanted. He said this very clearly and very emphatically. That's all that you have to do. So he was giving an astonishingly simple explanation of the secret of true creativity. What we see ordinarily, most of us see in a piece of marble only a lump of calcium carbonate. It is just that for us, most of us. But the artist's X-ray eyes see into the marble and envision the exquisite form latent in it. Keeping that ultimate figure in view, what does the artist do? He just removes whatever is superfluous and veiling in that block of marble. That's all that he does. So now, apply this to spiritual life. The block of life also has to be handled similarly. What we should do? We should chip away from it all the non-essentials so that the peace, the peace and bliss innate in it may shine forth. Everyone has that innate divine nature. It has been veiled. So you have to chip away all the impurities blocking the glory of the true self in everyone. That is the task that you should have to take for which you have been born as a human being. So God has given this opportunity so that you can experience real peace and real bliss. So this is the way of Vedanta. The Vedantic approach is just this. Remove all that is on the way. Chip off everything. Chip off mercilessly, courageously, fearlessly. That chipping off is what is called in Sanskrit term, neti, neti. Means not this, not this. Get it off them. When you know it is not this, why do you hug it again? Spiritual life means practical way of putting the spiritual ideas into application. Practical application is what is needed in spiritual life. If you are not doing that, you are no more spiritual. Talking spirituality is not living the life. Living the life means 100% you have to apply what you have thought of, what you have heard, what you have learned from the spiritual master. So, the process of neti neti, the negation of all that is irrelevant and accidental, that is the uh, way, that is the method we should adopt. And this is the rationale of Lord Krishna's insistence in the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Indriyartheshu vairagyam. Excellent phrase, excellent statement of Lord Krishna. This is enough. The whole philosophy has been embedded in this particular line. The whole philosophy of life is here. If you want to really enjoy the peace and bliss of life, you will have to establish Indriyartheshu Vairagyam. Excellent statement in Sanskrit it is there, meaning dispassion towards the objects of the senses. You mean what you say, that is spirituality. It is not a negative running away from life. Never mistake the statement 
that way but a positive and purposive reorientation that's the method reorientation towards the supreme goal that is in everyone's heart when you have the experience of god you realize him in your heart the lord does not want to uh, take away your little happiness what you are experiencing ordinarily in the life but then what is the meaning of this suggestion given by lord krishna he wants us to attain true joy why are you running after this fake one what you are trying to get joy is not the real joy if it is real joy you would not suffer the very fact you are suffering means the joy you are getting is not the real one so bhagwan asks us to be simple to be sensible with regard to the demands of the senses by evaluating them properly evaluating them properly after all what are these senses they are just instruments instruments which we are to manipulate the instruments are not to manipulate us we have to manipulate the instruments the instruments by themselves have no power we should not be slaves of the tyrant senses in the famous upanishad there is a famous passage it likens the horse senses to the horses horses are very restive just you touch it simply runs it knows nothing but running running is the nature of the horse and who is the rider the jiva the soul the embodied being is the rider if the soul or the embodied being is not able to handle the reins reins namely the mind if he is not able to handle the mind properly what will happen the horses become mad they become mad and they simply rush without any control and you know the result what would happen but if the mental control is good the senses function like obedient horses and take us to the goal supreme in fact this body these senses and the mind intellect they are all referred to as a chariot a vehicle for the embodied being to take his journey great journey on the spiritual path to reach the supreme abode of god so that's the way how we should know about the things the difficulty is that the senses are very powerful horses they are not sick horses if they are sick you are not able to carry any journey at all and it's a long journey you require a very good horse with tremendous energy and it is so everyone has that good strong horses these energetic horses are accustomed to run only they run outwards the upanishad points out the creator has projected the senses out going so as soon as you are born your perception is always fixed on outside you are hearing from outside you are seeing from outside you are reading from outside everything outward that means the senses are going outward that means man's perceptions are 
oriented outward and not inward the result is that we behave like children let loose in a exhibition the child moves on admiring one colorful object after another and loses its way home it is just lost on the way it is confused it is not able to find out the real uh, the, the way to its home we are so much taken up with the external glitter of the multifarious sansa objects that we forget the prime purpose of life what is that realization of god meaning realization of the truth meaning realization of what you are really so where is the fault the fault is not in the sense objects but in ourselves we allow the mind to go on contemplating with relish the outer objects and thereby develop a fascination you allow the mind to go you want it one day some uh, one of the devotees was asking she had lost a cat a very lovable cat was uh, dead for some reason some time passed but later on again the the intense desire came to that lady she came to me, sir i want to have a pet i want to have a cat you know the cat was dead a few months back see how the desire is working she wanted a cat and her whole mind is sitting on procuring the cat and she she is thinking how to get new one the good one the healthy one where to get all these thoughts coming up continuously in her mind how did they come because she first she allowed the mind to have she allowed the desire to come up on the surface of the mind she wanted it so the mind is running after it the senses are going after it the whole system is going up and she wants it till she gets it she is not really happy though outwardly she smiles her heart is full of sad because she had lost the cat which she was loving very much and she has not procured the new one in that process she is undergoing pain pain so here you have to understand uh, the philosophy what is that if you constantly meditate on any object what will happen because of your constantly thinking willingly you develop attachment to the object which you are thinking upon as i said she was thinking about cat her mind was drawn towards the cat so you are nourishing attachment from allowing the desire to crop up in the mind it doesn't stop there from attachment flares up desire it becomes intensified desire it makes you restless so from desire arises anger anger which is dangerous anger a n g e r danger d a n g e r remove d anger the lord then shows how one is met with total ruin because of his uh, uh, continued pursuit of the object of the sense so lord krishna says it is verily the slippery slope slippery slope to utter ruin you destroy yourself you destroy yourself 
instead of reaching the abode of truth, peace and bliss, you are going in the opposite direction. The more you go and satisfy, try to satisfy, try to get satisfaction, try to get happiness in the sense objects, the more you are going far, far, far away from God. So you will be suffering and suffering only. From one suffering you jump to another suffering, another to another. More suffering, much more suffering, much more, still more. To what extent? No end. No end. Why? Because the law of nature is infinite. Anything that you take up goes to infinity. Pain? Is there any end to the pain? Does your painkiller stop pain? Never. It stops for a while. But afterwards it comes with double force. Where is the end? No end. Everything goes to infinity. Joy, infinity. Happiness, infinity. Suffering, infinity. Pain, infinity. Anything, everything, infinity. So what starts as an apparently innocuous pleasure grows into an irresistible temptation. The more you pursue the sense objects, the stronger sounds this siren call. You get warning signals every time. Every time you are in the wrong way, the warning will come to you. But most of the people don't heed to the warning. They are careless. Because they are careless, they are led to dangerous consequences. Carelessness leads to dangerous consequences. If you are spiritual, you cannot be careless. You should not be careless. That's the point. There is a famous scripture. In Hindu scripture, we, there are many. <laughs> See Vedas, Puranas, Upapuranas. Puranas are the stories of lives and works of the saints and sages lived over a period of time. Eighteen big, big scriptures are there. And then again, eighteen subsidiary, total thirty-six, all dealing with the human problems, all dealing with the conflicts. There is a conflict, how to solve it? There is a problem, how to solve it? Problem, solution. Problem, solution. If you want solution, go to it. Do, see it. Apply it. Get the solution done. So, problems never remains a problem. Every problem has a solution. But you must know how to get into that solution. That's the point. Anyway, one of these famous uh, scriptures it compares, it compares this attitude of running after the senses for the sake of sense enjoyments, sense pleasures, sense happiness. It compares it to scratching, scratching an itch. Suppose you, you have got a little scratch, you have got a little itch you begin to scratch it. You find the process not unpleasant, so you continue the scratching, because the, the, every time you scratch an itch, you feel a, a kind of little uh, joy, whatever you may say, little pleasure, and you keep on scratching it. More and more you scratch. It finally turns into Scratching for scratching's sake. That means you surrender to the temptation till a passing itch soon becomes an open wound. Passing itch soon becomes an open wound. Particularly you can see this in animals. If there is any uh, small scratch on the body, it keeps on rubbing it again and again and again. It becomes wound, it becomes septic. It becomes horrible. The pursuit of sense-oriented joys in contact with the 
objects of the senses. He is like scratching the wound, scratching the itch continuously, rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. You get a little sensation of happiness, then immediately you get more unpleasantness. Again you scratch, little more happiness, little more unpleasantness. Again scratch, little more happiness, little more unhappiness. Then it becomes wound. Then you weep and cry. Why it happened to me? Why God is merc- merciless? Why God is not showing grace? God, you made a mischief and bring God here. <laughs> of course, our way of thinking is everything what we do, if it is good, we take credit. If it is bad, show finger to somebody else. Anyway, you get nothing in that process of thinking. Well, there is a famous uh, story of a saint, a great saint who, who has written Ram Charitmanas, wonderful uh, life story of Sri Ramchandra, this saint has written. It is very famous in India. It's all available. You have got English translation of the great epic Ramayana. Tulsi Das, most famous saint, one of the most famous saints of India, Tulsi Das. His whole body was vibrating with the mantra of Ram. Ram, Ram, whole body, whole body, whole system. There is nothing but Ram in him. His life is very interesting. It is not that uh, he, as soon as he was born, he became a great saint. It is not like that. He was utterly a worldly person. Utterly. That means he was hopeless, he should say. Such a person became a saint. Quite opposite. A hopeless person becoming a great saint. It is not a fiction. It is a life story. It is a living story of great Tulsi Das. You can get the life, his life also. It's all available. He was very worldly, meaning the way how worldly people live, same way he was living. Probably little more than what the ordinary worldly man would live. What I said earlier, what is the basis of, what is the basis for this worldly life? What is the strong foundation for this worldly life? Attachment. Attachment. If you become spiritual, the attachment gets transformed into non-attachment, not detachment, non-attachment. Attachment is a negative force. Non-attachment is a wonderful positive force, spiritual force. Non-attachment is a spiritual quality. With non-attachment, you can achieve anything. Nothing is impossible. With attachment, you lose everything. So, here, Tulsi Das was greatly attached towards his wife. It is not unnatural. Never mistake that. The relationship between husband and wife is not at all unnatural. It is, a, it is very natural. But here, he was over-attached. You see, there is a limitation. If you cross the limitation, if it becomes over, then it is little. You have to be concerned. Anything you overdo it, you have to be cautious. Overeating, you get indigestion next day. But if you are careful, if you are moderating it properly, then you are safe. <laughs> anyway, it, it's all here for us to analyze. Everyone need not have to go through the same experience of uh, uh, excessive attachment and suffering. No. Well, that guy is suffering. Let me learn a lesson by seeing that guy. Why you also want to go into the fire and see, oh, he is telling, uh, he burnt his finger in the fire. I don't know whether it is a fact or not. Let me see. And he also wants to go and put his hand in the fire and got burnt. Then, he, yeah, yeah, it is true. All right. If you want to enjoy, enjoy it like that. People are like that. Even though they see suffering, they won't learn. They think, ah, he does not know, I know. 
what he knows if he is entering he will be also in the same rut well it's all when you when you take up spiritual path be open minded be analytical be rational don't be fanatic don't be dogmatic be open that's why god has given intellect it's not for without any reason it has tremendous purpose the intellect is meant for analyzing and doing things properly you are not using it properly you are abusing it so you are suffering suffering is because of abusement if you use it properly you can't suffer you cannot even suffering becomes a source of joy suffering becomes a source of joy well coming to the story tulsi das was greatly attached to his wife of course the wife was beautiful to look at and he would not calm down if he does not see his wife for a moment as soon as he comes back from his work she must be there in the home she must be immediately he feels extreme joy by seeing his wife it continued for a while once it so happened the wife wanted to go to visit her mother's place her mother's place it is quite little far away not very near but she had to go probably there was some call from her mother to see her urgently so she went or probably she got bored in the home she wanted to have a change so she wanted to see her mother she went she thought probably she may return before the husband comes back but then on that particular day the husband came back earlier than the usual time he has come back a little early utter disappointment on his face why he is not seeing his wife where my wife has gone immediately he became restless totally restless he began to search for her literally he was searching he asked neighbor neighboring uh, families everybody was saying we don't know then the thought came well i have searched the whole town here she is not found here where might she might have gone probably she might have gone to her mother's home let me go and check up let me go and see so finally she came to mother in law's place and there she was and as soon as she as soon as tulsida saw her in her mother's home tulsida became very happy and this is the indication of deep attachment intense attachment and the wife became disgusted what is this so she began to tell him well how much you are deeply attached to this body referring to her body she is telling what is after all this body consists of it consists of bones it consists of flesh it consists of blood filth you are showing tremendous love towards me had you offered half of that love to rama you would have been spared from worldly troubles and you would have attained salvation half of it is enough you would have got him probably she did not mean what she said but when she said she said this very forcefully because she was disgusted by seeing his excessive attachment it's all right if he has normal attachment excessive means it becomes a kind of new sense and so she uttered these words probably that was a great turning point in the life of this tulsi das it gave him a kind of awakening what is it you are doing it awakened him to the unreality of the world and the worldly relations and also 
to the reality of the supreme spirit manifest as shri ramachandra and he also felt well this is too much this nonsense of deep attachment must be got rid of not by part by part it must be got rid of totally immediately instantly as early as possible so it became so forceful in his mind he immediately renounced the world he got rid of all relationships he just got out of the cage of attachment cage of attachment cage of pleasures and pains of this world he just got out of them went to benares not turning his back even for a moment not repenting what he has done on the other hand he became very strong and the result was he got the spiritual master he got into spiritual practice and the restlessness was turned towards restlessness for seeing god what my wife has told is true why should i not love god by whose grace i have got this body by whose grace i have got all these faculties by whose grace this awakening has come to me i must see him i must realize him nothing else i want with this strongest determination he gave a right about turn for the attachment so the deep attachment turned into total non attachment the result was he became the, one of the greatest saints of india even today millions of spiritual seekers are reading every day ramcharitmanas every day you have to work very hard to fight to him to remove all the impurities of the mind how much you have to work hard so that means one will pass through this worldly life he goes on in this way goes and goes and goes finally he becomes disgusted and then he feels this is wretched this is wretched every life every time i come i am not feeling real happy i am becoming more miserable it's all glamorous you can't satisfy the senses the more you try the more you want it it is like pouring the ghee to extinguish fire can you extinguish fire by pouring ghee it enhances the fire the flaming fire even so the more you go in for the sense joys the more you want them the more and more you want them and it won't come simply it always mixed with pain it always mixed with some some kind of unpleasantness so then you begin to turn back turn back that's the meaning of pronunciation turning back from the world towards god from outward to inward going inward that is the meaning of turning that is the meaning of going towards god that is the meaning of meditation what is meditation after all tell me meditation means turning inside focusing all your senses mind everything that you have towards god towards god and you are very serious about it and you are very sincere about it and you are not satisfied till you reach the goal all these factors are important to go beyond the senses there are three classes of people the first class of the first category i should say the first category of people what do they do they learn through just seeing the mistakes and experiences of others and they avoid getting into trouble 
they are they belong to the uh, first category first class category first class group i should say they just see it and learn well i don't have to pass through the same experience you just take steps to avoid it the second class they learn a lesson after themselves committing a mistake or going through an experience they pass through some experience and then they learn well this is wrong this is wrong and they are mediocre class the first class and the second class there's another type third class the people belonging to those class they never learn in spite of mistakes in spite of bad experiences in spite of suffering in spite of troubles they won't learn they keep on suffering and suffering they keep on passing to the same way of life they don't change they don't want to change they think unreal to be real real to be unreal they think world itself is god they are born here to enjoy the world that's all their philosophy of life is based on that their philosophy depends upon to what extent the world gives joy to them they never learn they are the worst type which you find in large numbers you see bhartrahari a very great king one of the great kings in india india had many many kings you know some kings were very good and some of them became rajarshis even though they are kings they are like saints it is a special status they have got all the qualities of a saint at the same time they are ruling the state bhartrahari belongs to the highest class of rajarshis he has composed 100 verses it's called vairagya shatakam it's all in sanskrit if you want to know the glory of uh, spiritual ideas you will have to learn sanskrit anyway nowadays uh, there is no difficulty you got translations everything you got in english now no problem well but sanskrit it has got its own beauty the words and the way they are connected and the the way the ideas are conveyed you can't describe it it's so beautiful in translation becomes diluted anyway something is better than nothing so here in 100 verses of vairagya shatakam that is dealing with the subject of uh, dispassion renunciation the rajashi the king says enjoyments have not been enjoyed but we have been eaten up religious austerities have not been performed but we have become scarched time has not vanished but we are vanishing desires have not worn out but we are wearing out see how nicely he has put the whole thing in this beautiful verse so anyway if you have to have the real peace and real bliss you will have to very definitely Uh, kick off this allurements this glamorous sense joys sense oriented joy pleasures there is a story of asprey bird probably you know that asprey bird 
It underlines the truth that the more the sense objects are considered desirable and sought after, the more is the misery we are in for. And here is the story. The Asprey bird catches a piece of meat. Immediately, it is attacked by other powerful birds for that meat. This poor bird flies from one tree to another and from one housetop to another housetop. How long can it do like that? It became disgusted, it became tired, exhausted. He became so exhausted, he dropped the meat. At once, all the other birds, just they left this bird, they just fled away. The Asprey bird regains the peace of mind uh, which it didn't have because it was holding on the lump of flesh. So, it has got a great lesson for us to learn. As Bhartrahari says, Bhoga na bhuktaha, vayameva bhuktaha. It is not the sense objects that have been enjoyed by us, but we who have been enjoyed by the sense objects. That's why when the god of death, Yama, offers Nachiketas, another story which comes in the Upanishad, he offers him a young brahmachari full of uh, tejas, full of spiritual glory, well suited for spiritual path. Lord of death, who knew the technique of realizing the truth, he first he began to test Nachiketas whether he is fit for receiving that knowledge. So he wanted to tempt him by all sorts of uh, temptations. He offered him a uh, long span of life and uh, pleasures as long as he wants to live and all luxury, everything, whatever he aspires for will be granted. Do you want them? Why, you are a young boy, you have to enjoy the life. That's the way how the people talk also. I am too young, let me pass a little experience in this world. That's how they talk about. And we have to be sympathetic. All right, you enjoy the world and come. <laughs> he goes and enjoys and he dies there. He doesn't come back. He dies to be reborn again, to undergo the same suffering. He has to come back. One time or other. Till he comes back, he keeps on suffering. Go on suffering. Go, 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 go. So like that. Anyway, but this young boy... He was not of that type. He was, he had that spiritual samskaras in him. He was the son of a saint, great saint. He was the son of a great saint. He had that quality and he was aspiring for spiritual knowledge. And he asked the God of death, well, you teach me the knowledge of Atman. Who am I? Where does this soul go after death? You explain the, describe the mystery of death, life and death. I want to know that. If you are granting a boon to me, as you said, you would grant a boon to me. That's a story, why he granted a boon. Anyway, you have committed yourself that you would grant me a boon. If you are granting and if you are going by what you are telling, then you please teach me the knowledge of the self. I don't want anything else. Do you mean to say that I live for long? Forever enjoying the luxuries of this world? Are you sure? Do you guarantee? Yama says, no, I can't guarantee that. Then why do you want to tempt me with those things? So he says, he rejects them. He rejects them boldly, courageously, willingly, not half-heartedly. Tavai vavaha stavan gite. Let all those pleasures, horses, chariots, songs, dances, all this things. Let them all remain with you. I don't want them. I am in need of spiritual knowledge. I want that and that alone. Well, so, build up your strong aspiration and learn the lessons by seeing. Take the spiritual ideas sincerely. Apply them practically. Be practical. Time is running. It won't wait for anyone. Even incarnations of God have to cast off the body. Everybody has to go. That is the law of nature. You can't remain in this 
body forever. Why should you remain in the same body? When the body has become weak, when the system is uh, sick, why do you want to hang on? Just get out of it. Let it go. Don't be sad after that. We don't want to go because we are deeply attached. That's one reason. Because we are afraid of another reason. We have no faith in God, another reason. And we want to hug on to the friends' relations and things of the world which, on which we have developed attachment. Nothing will work. You have to, you have to get out of it. As you, have, as you have no power to come to this world on your own power, in the same way, you have no power to get out of the body also. Birth and death are in the hands of God. When the time comes, you are just taken out. Finished. <laughs> so, well, have this ideology. Think properly. Analyze it. Be sincere. Be always open to correction. Don't be egoistic. Don't be foolish. Have tremendous reverence and love and devotion to the spiritual master. And certainly you will be able to go beyond the senses. Through the senses, you have to go beyond the senses. Means directing all the senses towards God. Because mind is a gateway either to the world or to the abode of truth. Turn in one direction, it takes you to the world. Turn in another direction, it takes you towards God. Mind is a gateway. With these words, I conclude my talk. Thank you very much.